In the depths of history, shrouded in mystique, lies the origin of the seven deadly sins. These seven transgressions known to many as pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth have been etched into the conscience of societies across the globe for millennia. But where did they come from, these sins that have been so universally recognized as the cardinal vices of humanity? This question takes us on an intriguing journey through time, exploring the annals of ancient civilizations and religious doctrines. The origins of the seven deadly sins are not confined to a single point in time or a particular geographical location. Instead, they are a fascinating blend of diverse cultures, philosophies, and religions that have evolved and interacted with each other over thousands of years. The concept of these sins is as old as civilization itself, finding echoes in the earliest human societies. They've been found in the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead, inscribed in cuneiform on Mesopotamian clay tablets, whispered in the philosophical discourses of ancient Greece, and woven into the moral fabric of the Roman Empire. These sins have been interpreted and reinterpreted by different cultures, each adding their unique perspective to the understanding of these vices. From the elaborate tales of the Hindu Puranas to the disciplined teachings of Buddhism and Jainism, the seven deadly sins have been a persistent theme in the moral compass of humanity. Throughout the ages, these sins have permeated the collective consciousness, becoming a universal concept that transcends boundaries of language, culture, and religion. They have served as a moral guideline, a cautionary tale, a tool for self-reflection, and a mirror to our deepest fears and desires. So, where exactly did these seven deadly sins originate? The answer is as complex as the human psyche itself, as diverse as the myriad cultures that have shaped our world. It's a tale that weaves together threads of history, philosophy, religion, and human nature, creating a tapestry as rich, as intricate, and as enigmatic as humanity itself. So, where exactly did these seven deadly sins originate? Let's unravel this mystery together. Our journey begins in the East, in the heart of ancient civilization, a place where the concept of sins, not unlike the seven deadly ones we're familiar with today, was already well established. These early references to sins are found in the sacred texts of Buddhism, Hinduism, and Zoroastrianism. In Buddhism, we find the five hindrances which are obstacles to enlightenment. Sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry, and doubt. These hindrances echo the sins of lust, wrath, sloth, envy and pride. Meanwhile, Hindu philosophy introduces us to the Arishad Vargas, the six enemies of the mind, desire, anger, greed, attachment, pride, and jealousy. Again, the parallels with the seven deadly sins are striking. Lastly, we have Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions. Rooted in the teachings of the prophet Zoroaster, it emphasizes the battle between good and evil. Central to this belief is the mantra of good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. However, its inversion, evil thoughts, evil words, and evil deeds, is a clear precursor to the concept of sins. These early references to sins demonstrate that the concept of moral failings leading to spiritual degradation is not unique to any one culture or religion. The universality of these concepts suggests a shared human understanding of the struggle between good and evil, right and wrong, virtue and vice. Yet it's fascinating to note that while these Eastern philosophies had concepts similar to what we now call the seven deadly sins, they were not grouped together or numbered as such. The seven deadly sins as we understand them today, a collection of vices that lead to spiritual death, were not fully articulated and categorized in this way in these early Eastern traditions. So if the seven deadly sins didn't fully take root in the East, where did this specific grouping come from? The answer lies not in the cradle of ancient civilization, but rather in a different part of the world. However, the seven deadly sins as we know them today took shape in a different part of the world, we journey now to the West, where the seven deadly sins found their definitive form. In the evolving landscape of Western religious thought, the concept of the seven deadly sins crystallized significantly under the auspices of Christianity. The Church, ever the moral compass, sought to guide its flock away from the treacherous path of vice and towards the salvation of virtue. A pivotal figure in this endeavor was Pope Gregory I. In the 6th century, this stalwart of the church took upon himself the task of formalizing these sins. Through his discerning lens, he shaped the nebulous sin concepts that had been inherited from the East into a concrete moral framework. 
This framework was not just a list, but a hierarchy, a ladder of sins that escalated in severity. At the base we find luxuria or lust, the mere desire for earthly pleasure. Ascending the ladder, gula or gluttony, the insatiable appetite for excess. Next, avaricia or greed, the unquenchable thirst for material wealth. Then acedia or sloth, the avoidance of spiritual and physical work. Ira or wrath, the uncontrollable rage against others. Invidia or envy, the covetous desire for others' possessions or traits. And at the top, the most deadly of all, superbia or pride, the excessive love of self, considered the root of all other sins. This ordering was no accident. It represented a profound understanding of human nature, a recognition of the escalating dangers of unchecked desires and emotions. It served as a stark reminder to the faithful, a beacon to navigate the treacherous waters of life, steering clear of the whirlpool of sin that threatened to pull them under. The seven deadly sins, as defined by Pope Gregory I, became the moral yardstick against which Christians measured their thoughts, words, and deeds. They served as a constant reminder of the dire consequences of giving in to our basest instincts. But the influence of the seven deadly sins extends far beyond the realm of religion. The seven deadly sins, having taken root in religious doctrine, began to permeate all aspects of culture. These sins, once confined to scripture and sermon, began to infiltrate the world of literature, art, and eventually, pop culture. Let's take a step back to the 14th century, to the works of Dante Alighieri and Geoffrey Chaucer. Dante's Inferno, part of his epic Divine Comedy, is a vivid portrayal of a journey through hell, each circle of which is dedicated to a specific sin. The seven deadly sins are not just themes here, they are the very foundation of this literary masterpiece. Fast forward a few decades and we find Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Each tale is a study in human nature, often highlighting one or more of the seven deadly sins. The Pardoner's Tale, for instance, is a cautionary story against the sin of greed, while the Wife of Bath's Tale confronts the sin of lust. But the influence of the seven deadly sins is not just confined to the realm of classic literature, they have seeped into the very fabric of our modern pop culture. From the silver screen to the small screen, from graphic novels to video games, the seven deadly sins make frequent appearances. Take the film C7N, a dark thriller that uses the sins as its central plot device, or consider the TV series Supernatural, where the sins are personified as demons. In the realm of manga and anime, the Seven Deadly Sins series revolves around seven knights, each representing a sin. Even in video games, titles like Dante's Inferno take inspiration from the sins. In each of these examples, the seven deadly sins serve as an exploration of human nature. They force us to confront our own flaws, our own capacity for evil. They remind us that these sins are not just antiquated religious concepts, but enduring aspects of the human experience. And there you have it, the intriguing journey of the seven deadly sins from ancient texts to our modern day. In our contemporary world, the echoes of the seven deadly sins still reverberate. Now, you might be wondering, how do these ancient concepts hold sway in our modern fast-paced lives? Well, they're more relevant than you might think. Look around, and you'll see these age-old sins reflected in our societal and individual behaviors. Whether it's the gluttony displayed by our insatiable consumerism, or the pride that often characterizes our online personas, the seven deadly sins are alive and well in the 21st century. They serve as a mirror, reflecting our actions and attitudes back to us, and reminding us of the potential for moral decay that lies within us all. But it's not all doom and gloom. Recognizing these sins in our lives is the first step towards personal growth. They serve as a moral compass, guiding us away from harmful behaviors and towards a more virtuous life. When we acknowledge our own greed, we can strive to be more generous. When we see our envy, we can work to cultivate gratitude. Each sin, once recognized, can be transformed into a catalyst for positive change. This understanding can also improve our societal relations. By recognizing these sins in others, we can foster empathy and understanding rather than judgment. We can see that we all struggle with the same moral pitfalls and that we're all on a journey towards becoming better versions of ourselves. And let's not forget their cultural significance. The seven deadly sins continue to inspire artists, writers, and filmmakers, serving as powerful themes in our books, movies, and artworks. 
They resonate with us on a deep level, reminding us of our shared human experience and our continual struggle between virtue and vice. So, the next time you hear of the seven deadly sins, remember their intriguing journey from ancient times to the present day from their shrouded origins through their birth in the East and influenced by Christianity to their cultural impact and modern relevance, these timeless concepts continue to shape our world and ourselves in profound ways.